Hello everyone, you're listening to the Blockchain Socialist Podcast and for today's interview I have Sally Sadegi. He is a master's researcher at GCAS, which is the Global Center for Advanced Studies. You guys may remember the university as being one of the only um, cooperatively owned universities who I had a, a, the opportunity to interview uh, Creston Davis, who is the founder of it. Um, so Sally is a, is a master's in, in one of the programs in crypto economics, and he is also based in Iran. Um, he has a lot of very, very interesting thoughts on uh, cryptocurrency, and I'm really curious about learning about his experience, especially of living in Iran, because um, there's been, a lot, of course, a lot of news around Iran and its relationship to um, the mining of Bitcoin and the use of cryptocurrencies as it's under um, some, pretty, um, some pretty devastating economic sanctions. So, hey, Sally, how are you doing? Uh, it's uh, nice to be here with you, uh, the Belakshin Socialist. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming. Um, so maybe to start off, you could give a bit of an introduction to yourself, your background, and how you got started at being a researcher at GCAS in crypto economics. Uh, of course, uh, th this is uh, Salman. Uh, uh, I am a researcher at the Global Center for Advanced Studies. Uh, about myself, uh, my uh, academic background all goes to the uh, engineering majors. Actually, uh, I studied mechanical engineering and uh, finished with a Master of Science. Um, but about the cryptocurrency, I got to know about Bitcoin, uh, I think, uh, back in 2013, uh, when I was just starting my master program. Uh, but uh, it took me, I think, uh, two or three years to fully get the idea and become a, a crypto enthusiast. Uh, after uh, graduation, I started to work with Coin Iran, uh, which is an independent publication uh, and a research center uh, uh, covering blockchain logics and uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, it was a great experience for me as it provided me with uh, a broad knowledge of uh, crypto uh, projects uh, which are existing in the market. Uh, uh, it was in 2020 that uh, I found the uh, GCAS. Uh, at that moment, uh, I was uh, searching for uh, a university to study uh, academically uh, cryptocurrency. And uh, GCAS was among the rare, and uh, you know that uh, it appears beautiful to me from the very beginning. Uh, you know the idea behind GCAS uh, it was so revolutionary, you know, it is a real uh, practice of crypto economics, I think. And uh, you see its amazing processors, the use of uh, cryptocurrency, its native cryptocurrency, uh, I mean, the GKC token. Uh, to sustain the academic relation, I thought that uh, something new uh, can happen with this educational model. Uh, so uh, I applied uh, for the GCAS. Uh, crypto economics uh, program and uh, now uh, i am here uh, with you uh, so in in you said in 2013 is when you first found bitcoin and i guess what were your thoughts uh, in the beginning when you were first starting to get into into cryptocurrency you know uh, it was uh, somehow funny because one of my friends came to me and uh, just told me about uh, a hacking attack uh, and his uh, the company that uh, he used to work at, at that moment. And uh, the hacker just asked for Bitcoin, you know? And he asked me, do you know what is Bitcoin? I, I need some Bitcoin to uh, solve the problem. And uh, yeah, <laughs> at the first moment, I, I just thought that it is the money of, uh, you know, uh, hackers or, you know, white hackers or uh, yeah. the dark stuff. But uh, as time uh, passed and uh, I just uh, became more uh, uh, interested in uh, Bitcoin, uh, uh, it was so, uh, you know, for a person who lives in Iran uh, with all those economic limitations, you know, uh, at first uh, I thought that uh, it, this is the, the currency of us, you know, <laughs> uh, mm. this is the money of us. And uh, yes, this is the, the other story. Uh, the Satoshi's invention was so much great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So I guess that yeah, the the link between cryptocurrency and um sort of economic sanction sanctions was like pretty clear. Even though, yeah, I guess <laughs> the first time you came across it was because of uh, <laughs> hacking attempts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was this uh, my funny. story with Bitcoin. So you mentioned the the uh, American sanction, economic sanction. Uh, you want me to talk about? Yes, yeah, definitely. I, I was going to ask you next, like, what is it like at the moment in Iran? Um, with these imperial economic sanctions that have been levied against the country by the U.S., how how has that sort of affected everyday life uh, for Iranians? Uh, so uh, you have the pandemic, uh, economic recession, uh, plus American sanctions and vast corruption <laughs> in a country like mine. So you see that uh, it would not be easy uh, to leave this condition. Uh, and about the sanction, uh, I, I think of them as an uh, economic terrorism, you know, uh, because mm. at the end, the, these are masses uh, who really suffer from all these uh, economic limitations uh, and not the government. Um, they have the power to print money, you know. Uh, so uh, take, for example, myself, uh, it is not possible for me to work with international companies. Uh, I was about uh, to join one of the most leading publications of the space, uh, but because of my nationality, I missed uh, the position. So you see that the, this is uh, innocent people uh, who really suffer from uh, the economic sanctions. And I believe that uh, it doesn't work. Uh, you can see similar cases uh, throughout history. You see Iraq, you see Libya, you see North Korea. And uh, I think uh, it uh, doesn't work, and uh, even uh, it leads to a more totalitarian uh, situation in in the sanctioned countries. And uh, I think uh, this is the way that uh, the, the imperialism is exercised its power. So, yeah. So I think yeah. One of the things that I think people miss when they're talking about you know, quote, totalitarian regimes in countries that have economic sanctions is, um, I mean, is the fact that they are under economic sanctions. So I think sometimes people in the West, uh, people in the US, um, so like pro, pro-American, pro-Americans and, and, and pro-Western um, foreign uh, influence, they sort of forget that these countries are under economic sanctions. They're not allowed to take advantage of maybe the resources that they have and, and you know, do the thing that all our other countries are able to do and, and trade their goods on the markets. Um, and because of that, that's something that, yeah, the average person suffers a whole lot more than does, you know, the president of, of whatever country is being sanctioned. That's something that's, uh, that's very uh, hugely miss. Um, I, and so I guess going off of that, as you're aware, of course, that there's been a lot of reports that countries like Iran have been mining Bitcoin um, in order to make money under these sanctions and potentially being used to facilitate trade with other sanctioned countries. So I'm, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts on on the use of Bitcoin for, for trade, for getting around um, these sanctions. What... Uh, I think uh, it was the aim of Satoshi from the very beginning to remove intermediaries. Uh, so uh, sanctions are exactly the way that uh, intermediaries uh, exercise their power. Uh, regardless of the fact that uh, it is for good or bad. Uh, so uh, it, it would not be surprising to see uh, countries under the pressure of American sanctions are uh, using potentialities of cryptocurrency uh, in direct transfer of values. Uh, so, uh, of course, at this moment, uh, the global cryptocurrency market, uh, I think, is not that much big to cover all the needs that a country like mine uh, may have from uh, international trade. But I think it can work in, in some extent. So if I can pay for a course uh, with cryptos, uh, while I cannot pay with fiat, uh, so why don't you use cryptos? Uh, and uh, I think, uh, yes, uh, they are using the potentialities of cryptocurrencies. You had some interesting thoughts um, when we were speaking about when we were speaking before about Iran, specifically in terms of mining Bitcoin. You're saying that in Iran, in order to mine Bitcoin, you had to have you have to have a license to be able to do it. And recently, the government used sort of the uh, excuse of the energy grid going down as a reason to stop Bitcoin mining for um, 
for sort of like these licensed Bitcoin miners. But uh, you claim that there's probably a high chance that the government is still mining Bitcoin anyways. Yes, you're right. Uh, you know, they always put the blame on the wrong side. Based on my research, uh, and uh, at most uh, around 5% of uh, all mining Bitcoin uh, took place uh, in Iran uh, in this year. So uh, when you add other data, you come with the fact that uh, it's about 1% of the total energy consumption of Iran. And uh, so I think it is not that much big uh, to cause uh, blackouts in cities or uh, power shortage. Uh, mm -hmm. Officials are uh, blaming uh, mining, but uh, who are uh, exactly mining uh, Bitcoin in Iran? Uh, I think uh, they are mining uh, Bitcoin, and uh, this is not uh, true uh, to put the blame on the people or on, on the masses. That there, you know, the, the you, uh, out of date mining facilities. Yeah, people in Iran are using uh, cryptocurrencies, but you know that in a, in a small quantities, uh, very very small. In, uh, the underground, uh, if they have, you know, uh, with, with the aim of uh, gaining a bunch of dollars. And uh, this cannot cause, uh, you, uh, you see, blackouts or yeah. power shortage uh, in a country with so much uh, resources of oil and gas and, uh, you know, yeah, other yeah. fossil fuels. I just thought that was important to note because, um, I mean, it was interesting to see people... Um, I guess people who are like very anti anti cryptocurrency really jump on that announcement that Iran was yeah banning people from being able to to mine it. But yeah, talking with someone like you who's actually in Iran to say that um, no, it's actually kind of silly to think that you know Bitcoin mining really was going to take out the energy grid of such a country with so much oil wealth um, or so much oil that 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 would be like possible is like kind of silly um and that probably there are more political reasons for that and not necessarily like energy reasons for that of course yeah exactly but maybe continuing on this uh thread of like imperialism again what are your thoughts on cryptocurrencies like bitcoin as weapons of anti-imperialism uh great uh, it's my favorite question <laughs> uh, f first of all uh, what is uh, imperialism so uh, we can suppose that uh, Lenin was right and uh, imperialism is the highest stage of uh, capitalism. So once again, you have uh, capitalism in the general sense. Uh, so first, uh, I, I need to define what capitalism is in my point of view. Then we can discuss how uh, cryptocurrencies can uh, be anti-capitalist weapons. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know that you cannot find any specific definition of cap capitalism in any academic textbooks, even in Alfred Marshall's uh, Principle of Economics, uh, which I can't find any definition for capitalism. Uh, they believe, uh, the academics, I mean, uh, believe yeah. that capitalism is an abstract economic concept. Uh, so when you think uh, it is an abstract concept, then there is no way to change it, anything. Uh, but um, for me, uh, I think uh, capitalism is more a historical concept, a, a specific system of production uh, in which the forces of production, I mean the uh, proletarian, the working class, uh, are not the owners of the means of production. Uh, so uh, capitalism for me is an economic machine uh, which produces a class uh, which does not have anything uh, except its working power. Uh, and uh, it's more close to the interpretation of uh, Maurice Dobb, uh, the British economist uh, from Capital. Uh, so uh, you see that the non-owner, uh, the non-owner class, the, uh, I mean the indebted class, uh, mm -hmm. should bring uh, his working power to the market, uh, I mean in the capitalism, uh, should bring his working power to the market uh, to sell in order to uh, pay his debt uh, to his life or uh, to the owners, uh, which are the bourgeoisie. Uh, so you see that in capitalism, uh, the socially necessary force uh, becomes the abstract force of labor. Uh, and the, the form of value uh, takes the form of commodity and takes the form of capitalism. Here we have Marx, uh, human activity in his analysis uh, is thus violently reduced uh, 
uh, to working hours and uh, at the end become idealized in the form of good and commodity. Uh, so uh, capitalism for me is a regime of separation, uh, separation uh, between human and uh, his productive activity. Mm. And I think uh, this uh, destructive apparatus uh, works uh, based on money, uh, especially when money is a mean to store value. Uh, and uh, right. uh, crypt- yes, and cryptocurrencies are uh, a, a new kind of money. So uh, it was Deleuze who once uh, said that uh, what we need these days definitely is not uh, any critique of Marxism, but a, a modern theory of money, uh, as good as Marx, that proceeds from where he left. So uh, for me, cryptocurrency as at least uh, gives us the opportunity to teach uh, against the grain uh, by the uh, by somehow uh, retroactively interpreting uh, money. Uh, you know that uh, with uh, crypto, with the cryptography and the blockchain, uh, people uh, can uh, take their security back uh, from the state. Uh, it can be a weapon in in the delusion sense, uh, especially in the state of control. Uh, so, uh, for me, but uh, it can even be a more devastating weapon, uh, a tool to fight against the uh, very way that capitalism exploits humanity and the value of its uh, socially uh, necessary force. Uh, so, you are familiar with the DAOs. Uh, yeah. You can say, for example, uh, yeah, the, the GCAS. Uh, I, I mean by DAOs are uh, decentralized uh, autonomous organizations where you can use the uh, potentialities of a smart contract and the blockchain uh, to build communities in which uh, tokens uh, determine uh, only the extent to which uh, anyone participate in production uh, and not a means to just store value and uh, make class difference. Uh, and uh, I think uh, not Bitcoin, but uh, cryptocurrencies in, the, in, in their general uh, ID uh, can be used uh, as, a, as a weapon uh, to resist, I think, uh, the very way that uh, capitalism uh, exploits uh, exploit us. Mm. So to you, I guess, money as a representation of value and in which um, value is sort of extracted from workers, uh, their surplus value especially, which is given to the bourgeoisie, the sort of basically bourgeoisie taking profit, sort of forms the basis of uh, exploitation under under like Marxist thought. Um, but because it's represented through money, it's important to answer the question of how do we reimagine that and how do we break, I guess, the current monetary regime and as and how do we have that as part of i guess a type of you know socialist struggle or some type of struggle against uh, capitalism so uh, you see that uh, i think uh, you know i'm not that much naive to think that we can just walk out of the capitalist zone uh, no. but uh, yeah but you know that uh, we can build uh, communities uh, based on the capabilities of uh, small contracts and the uh, cryptocurrencies uh, to share uh, our surplus existence uh, in a way that are not dominated by the financial uh, institutions. So uh, we have Marx again because when uh, you change the relation of production, you can change. Uh, the superstructure of the society in, 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 the, Marx, uh, in the Marxist analysis. Uh, so uh, then, for example, uh, you can uh, set a token or a cryptocurrency in, uh, in a community uh, that uh, can uh, somehow play the role of money uh, when it is a means uh, to the exchange or when it wants to bring us uh, monetary calculation. Uh, but you absorb the rule of money as the mean to store value. You know, this is the problem I think with the uh, with the current monetary system. Because when money become credit, when money become uh, capital, uh, it doesn't have any reference uh, other than uh, the future exploitation of uh, those who are in debt, uh, who do, do not have money. Uh, so I think it, it is the somehow task of society or the whole community. Uh, to uh, just 
uh, cover uh, the future needs of all part of the society, uh, all part of the community. And uh, I think we can build. Uh, you you have heard about the uh, Harvey's uh, uh, interpret uh, Harvey's critique of capitalism in 17th contradiction in capitalism. Uh, in, in, in this book, uh, Harvey uh, explicitly mentioned that the uh, one of the most uh, fundamental uh, contradiction in capitalism is uh, the contradiction between uh, the exchange value of commodities and the use value of commodities. And I think it, this is because of money that this contradiction happens, uh, especially when money becomes uh, a means of store value. And, uh, at the end, uh, you 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 need uh, some artist or you need some uh, somehow uh, some scientist uh, to imagine uh, a new theory of money to just uh, build a new uh, a new theory about human communication. And I think it is possible because uh, we we uh, we have enough resources to make all basic needs of uh, humanity and. You you know that uh, we have two billion people, two billion people who are suffering from. Uh, you know that one third of uh, world are suffering from the uh, water uh, shortage or suffer from yeah they are they are hungry. Yeah. In a, that, yeah, that that are dominated by the goods and commodities. Uh, you, you have some people that are suffering from uh, yeah not having uh, fresh water or not having enough food. So I think uh, we can rebuild our uh, small communities. Um, for example, you can take, for example, the GCAS community, uh, uh, because it's, for me, a real practice of, uh, a real practice in the Marxist, uh, in the Marxist sense uh, uh, of crypto economies. So uh, you uh, have the relation between professors and the students and the staff, uh, which are managed by cryptocurrency by a token, and uh, this token uh, is uh, somehow managed by the, uh, all, all the community, and <clears throat> uh, it turns to ownership share. And this is the way that uh, we can fight against capitalism because, as I mentioned earlier, capitalism is a, a, a systematic machine that separate the uh, ma the forces of production from the means of production. So uh, yeah, if we can solve uh, this uh, contradiction uh, between the ownership of the, the one who produce, the one who works, uh, I think we can fight uh, against capitalism. And uh, we can once again recall the idea of uh, communism, recall the, uh, I, I mean the philosophic idea of communism uh as the uh, state uh, as the classless uh, state for uh human yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I think of cryptocurrency uh, like that i think cryptocurrency has some uh, revolutionary uh, potentialities uh, that uh, i think needs some sort of subjectivity to uh, use them uh, I think uh, it was uh, it, it is you <laughs> you are doing the same because uh, you are building a, a, a leftist literature uh, for mm -hmm. uh, cryptocurrency yes and uh, this is the the right way because uh, you know that uh, the uh, there is uh, the right wing domination of uh, uh, the theories about uh, everything and even about cryptocurrency yeah. uh, they just yeah, they argue that uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies can bring us those Hayekian uh, dream of, uh, yeah, a, a, a true competition in uh, in the issuance of currency or in the issuance of money. But once again, you have all those uh, capitalist uh, institutions in, in this Hayekian, uh, yeah. yeah, because it's imperialism is the highest stage of capital. Uh, we, yeah, this is all. Uh, I think uh, we should build something new with cryptocurrency. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, if you're enjoying this episode so far, be sure to subscribe, leave a review, share with a friend, and join the crypto leftist communities on Discord or Reddit, which you can find links to in the show notes. 
If you're enjoying the interview or find the content I make important, you can pitch into my efforts starting at $3 a month on patreon.com slash the blockchain socialist to help me out and join the newest patrons like Mihail and Emily. Any amount really helps since making this stuff isn't free in terms of money or time. As a patron, you'll get a shout out on an episode like I just did and access to Patreon exclusive contents like Q&A episodes where you can submit and vote on questions you'd like me to answer. And I'll give my thoughts in roughly 20 minutes. In the latest Patreon Q&A episode, I take a deeper look into the concept of decentralization versus centralization in software and how that could apply to a socialist politics. Of course, I'll still be making free content like this interview to help spread the message that blockchain doesn't need to be used to further entrench capitalist exploitation if we put our efforts into it. So if that message resonates with you, I hope you'll consider helping out. One side note I wanted to make you guys aware of is that the podcast will now be broadcasted starting from the beginning of the podcast on Repeater Radio. So if you go to repeater-radio.com, You'll be able to listen to the podcast twice a week, starting from the very beginning. They've already broadcasted a couple of episodes already, but if you wanted to find a way to catch up and listen to some of the earlier content that I made, then definitely check it out at repeater-radio.com. It's in partnership with, of course, Repeater Books, which is a publishing house based in the UK that publishes radical left-wing books. But that's it for me. Let's get back to the interview with Salman Sadegi. Definitely, yeah. I think the yeah the the hacking hacking stuff. It's very like it's like a, a bourgeois revolution on top of like a bourgeois world, which is very um uh very very absurd. But um but yeah. But I I guess if I, if I understand correctly, it's really like being able to challenge these type of things that we take for granted under capitalism as being like set in stone. It sort of is two birds in one stone, and that it's. Um, it helps us rethink, you know, value and the relationship between value and, and, and like money in general, but also like the, 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 the role of the state and like the relationship between that and like the working classes and the, uh, and the owning classes. And like through all these different contradictions, we can also use it for anti-imperialism. So, yes. So, you know, uh, Bitcoin uh, in what is now, uh, I think, uh, can, uh, you know, that when, when you talk about uh, money as the representation of value, so you have fiat money uh, as the representation of the representation of value, uh, because when you have some uh, gold-backed currency or when you have gold as, as a currency, you can say that this is the representation of value. Uh, but uh, you know that fiat currencies was uh, the were the representation of the representation of uh, the representation of gold, and they are the representation of at the end uh, they are the representation of the representation of value, a double set of math, you know. And uh, I think at most Bitcoin can uh, just take off one, and uh, if we want to uncover uh, the first math. Uh, that uh, separates value from uh, what uh, separates value from its quality, uh, because I think it's a qualitative concept, not a quantitative. And uh, I think this is the critical point because the the, the right wing just want us to, at most, uh, take off one mask. You know, uh, they want to say it is like back into a gold batch monetary system. Uh, but beside, uh, instead of gold, we have now the digital gold, we have Bitcoin. So, uh, the, yeah, uh, it, it is more durable, it is more uh, limited than gold, it is, yeah, it can work better than gold. Uh, but I, for me, it is not all about the message of Satoshi. Uh, the decentralization of the governance, the decentralization of um, power and responsibility. Uh, and uh, at the end, uh, to uh, uh, somehow build a, a society, uh, a free money society, uh, a society can uh, in which uh, all the members uh, can participate in productive activity outside the realm of finance, outside the realm of the colonized realm of capitalism. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, at that society, I think uh, the very meaning of uh, yeah, productive activity will change uh, because the very way that uh, the production happens uh, is changed. 
So, but yeah, basically like undermining imperial power through, in a way, sort of opening the market a little bit in, in one sense, if you look at it in one way where, uh, you know, at least for you, taking your example that you gave earlier, like you weren't able to get a position because of your nationality. If, you know, probably a big reason why they didn't do that is because they probably rely on uh, banking infrastructure, which um, adheres to, you know, American policy or something like that. But if there was a way in which they didn't have to rely on the American or Western sort of banking infrastructure, you know, through through something like Bitcoin, through some sort of cryptocurrency, then it sort of it undermines in a big way um, by creating this this sort of like using like the digital world as as a form of um, yeah as a form of like giving you access into yeah into into to making your own money in the way that you want to I guess. Um, yeah, and, and using it to build, even if you want, completely new forms of relationships between um, between people and new relationships uh, in relationship to production to form your own communities that are not reliant on the states, that are not reliant on uh, the banking infrastructure. Um, so do you have any favorites, like... I think you you mentioned you've mentioned Marx and Deleuze and and a couple of other people, but did, is there any like particular philosopher that you like to refer to when it comes to like for you thinking about um, cryptocurrency or blockchain? So I think uh, cryptocurrencies uh, somehow you can find uh, interesting ideas uh, in Deleuze uh, philosophy uh, and link it to cryptocurrency. Uh, but myself, I, I'm working on Alain Bedeau's uh, philosophy to build my literature about uh, how uh, the event of uh, Bitcoin can bring us uh, the truth. Uh, how can we build the truth of the event of uh, cryptocurrency? Uh, you know that uh, because of the intrinsic uh, contradiction in capitalism, uh, Crises are not uh, are uh, inevitable. So uh, it is in the moment of crisis that the uh, critical point of capitalism shows uh, themselves, you know, uh, to us. And, uh, and now uh, we have the infrastructure, we have the P2P uh, relations, uh, we have the cryptography, and we have the blockchain. Uh, and so this time, uh, I think uh, we are more strong than ever. Uh, to fight again uh, the very way that they exploit us. Uh, so uh, it was Marx once again uh, in the uh, Communist Manifesto that uh, wrote that capitalism is the domination of past uh, over present. Uh, I really like these sentences by by Marx because by Marx and uh, Engels because uh, you know that. Uh, it is the way that money, I think, uh, dominates. Uh, uh, you know, money is a domination of past, I think, over present. When it, when it is the story, it means to store value. It's the domination of the past relation uh, in the future and the, in the present and in the future. Uh, so mm -hmm. how, yeah, how can we take uh, our time or our future back from the uh, capitalist state, from the bourgeoisie? We, as the working class, we, as the bourgeoisie, we, we as the proletarian, we as the non-owners. Uh, so uh, I, I think uh, cryptocurrency uh, promises uh, something really new, a, a really new future uh, for humanity. Because when uh, a worker uh, can uh, take uh, his time back from his boss, uh, then uh, yes, then he can uh, be a true human. Then he can yeah. do yeah. Then he can do human activity, uh, and uh, yeah, we can solve the the, the problem of separation, the, the problem of alienation. Uh, I think that uh, happens between uh, when uh, a human is separated from his activity, uh, from his potential, uh, uh, from his desires, and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The thing that uh, crypto uh, looks for me. Yeah, I, I I like that 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 phrase of you know the past dominating the present. I think it's for me. I think of like how previous like previous forms of hierarchy or exploitation sort of 
have been defining our present forms of <laughs> of hierarchy and exploitation. Um, you know, if you if you come from a family of uh, of of wealthy industrialists, then probably in the present you are probably not too worried about um, too worried about making money or too worried about having a job or having a house or or what have you because. Yeah, the maybe your the the generations before you did the exploitation so that you don't have to um, do it in the same way. No, because, yeah. yeah, because you have money, you have capital, and then you you have capital, you sh- need to put it in financial uh, market or you need to put it in banks. Uh, when you put it in uh, financial institutions or pu- put it in banks, they use it uh, to just pour the bombs in the, the Middle East or. <laughs> Uh, in mm. the uh, Africa, yeah, and this yeah. is the end, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the case of imperialism, I mean, it's really the past of colonialism that has sort of defined, and previous forms of imperialism that have defined really the current ones. Do you have anything to say towards maybe those of us who may live in the West who may be skeptical of crypto or blockchain? Mm, I think uh, they need, you know, that blockchain and cryptocurrency are the the souvenir of the West. <laughs> so uh, mm-hmm. they need, I think, to be more skeptical about their government and the, the liberal democracy <laughs> and not <laughs> about the blockchain that brings us transparency and confidence. So what, what, what is the problem with the blockchain? Uh, it is all about the transparency and security. So uh, I think they need to be more uh, skeptical about their uh, liberal democracy. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I guess yeah, it's sort of like um, to be so worked up about uh, about cryptocurrency is sort of whenever you we have yeah in in the West we we have so many bigger problems to deal with um, that to focus so much energy on blockchain sometimes I feel is like a, a bit a bit of a waste. Of course, there are there are relevant criticisms to make and and re- you know reasons to be skeptical, but like why can't you put that same energy towards? Yeah, the idea of liberal democracy or the idea of capitalism and the and what 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 the media, which has an interest in you know sort of how well the the state does and how well the capitalist class does in your country, like when they have an interest in that, like there where there isn't as much. It's just it's sort of a question, like why don't you put as much effort into that as well? Well, yes, <laughs> uh, they don't like uh, cryptocurrencies. The the idea behind the the true idea behind cryptocurrency. Uh, because uh, I think they uh, they understand better than us that uh, it can treat them the, the uh, authority and they can treat them uh, the the their the power relation and uh, mm. we cannot expect from mass media to cover uh, truly uh, cryptocurrencies or the true potentials of uh, decentralized uh, currencies. Uh, so who one uh, who knows uh, exactly how much financial uh, the, the banking system uh, consume energy? But you see that uh, the the most wealthiest uh, like uh, Elon Musk uh, nagging about Bitcoin, uh, uh, you know, power consumption or its environmental impact. Uh, when we know that the capital is the, uh, the is the blame for. Uh, all the these environmental uh, degradation. So uh, mm. when you have the, when you have uh, when you are the wealthiest, you 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 are uh, the you are the exact the exact person who is the blame uh, for uh, yeah. environmental change. But you you see that he, he put the blame on Bitcoin. So uh, it's like a joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's whenever it's it's it's, it's... Yeah, his class of of people, the capitalist class, I mean, billionaires who are doing the vast majority of emitting like way more carbon than than everyone else and at a much, you know, it's a much bigger problem than it is uh, Bitcoin mining. Of course, they are the problem. I'm I'm all the way at the last question. I don't know if there's any like last things you really want to mention before... Um, before we wrap it up? Uh, so, uh, once again, uh, let me thank you for your invitation. Uh, so, and uh, nothing special. Uh, I, I think uh, we should 
uh, know uh, that uh, we cannot sit on your uh, on our ass and see that the world is changing. Uh, we should contribute something uh, to the change, I think. And uh, it was once again the lose uh, that uh, in his post script on the societies of control just invites us to renew our uh, weapons to uh, build the new uh, core of uh, resistance. So uh, the world uh, has changed and uh, we should uh, know that and uh, we should look for um, new uh, weapons, uh, which I think that uh, this is the time to fight against money uh, because we have the uh, infrastructure and we have the uh, technological uh, tools. Uh, so uh, if um, the lose was alive, I, uh, I think uh, he uh, recommended us to take uh, cryptocurrencies uh, as our weapon. So this is all. Thank you. I think that, that was a, yeah, a really nice way to end it. Maybe just to finish it off, I mean, first off to say, yeah, I mean, thank you for coming on and I'm really happy that you were able to share your experience with us. Yeah, it was really um, nice to hear from someone who is, you know, living in Iran, who is Iranian, who has the experience of living in a country which is suffering under economic sanctions and has done quite a bit of, of research on cryptocurrencies uh, and blockchain. So maybe to finish it off, could you let people know where they can follow you, keep up with you and your work? So uh, thank you. Uh, they can just follow me on my Medium or on my Twitter. Uh, this is uh, Sally Sadri uh, in everywhere. They can just Google it and find uh, my page. Well, thank you so much, Sally. It's been uh, really a pleasure. <laughs>